What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Hardcore Minecraft Project Ozone 3, episode 2. And we now have 10 iron mesh. Um, the process, as you can see, we've now got an iron chest as well and a hopper to automate that process. So all I have to do is put the chunks in the top hopper. It automatically puts that into the furnace, cooks it, and puts the completed goods in the bottom. Nice and easy. First automation of many. Now, we are not going to spend time doing sieving and smashing rocks with a hammer. Because I'm pretty confident nobody wants to see that. Just as an example or a caveat, this is all I do. So I build the largest structure I can with the resource I want to smash. Uh, using the wand where when I can. Um, obviously the stone ones are a bit pants. And then obviously the same with the hammer and smashy smashy until I get gravel. Now you then have to do the same to gravel. Put it all down, smashy smashy to get sand. And once more with feeling the same with sand. And then you get dust. Now on the process that we're actually at, which is the iron mesh. The gravel is going to give you stuff like the resources you're seeing of course. Uh, also coal, diamond, emerald uh, and your rock candy. The sand will give you the similar resources, but also the quartz and oddly cocoa powder. It, uh, yeah, cocoa powder thing. Um, and then finally, with the dust, you're going to get redstone, glowstone, blaze powder, along with, again, resources. Just throwing in another hopper there on the side, the left hand or right hand side of the furnace will put in the fuel, which is in our instance, coal. So putting the coal in there, we'll keep that running and then all of the chunks that we get from all of that sieve in the we've done and crushing, as you can see there, will be auto processed now into the relevant ingots. And from there, we're now into more of a normal Minecraft playing game that you're used to. Uh, wrapping some iron around a iron, sorry, a chest makes an iron chest. And then gold around that makes a gold chest. And each level uh, increases its capacity, which is good. So that setup there is a very standard but automated process of... I don't know why I keep moving. Stop moving and finish breaking that bloody brock. There we go. Uh, another automation, or a vague one anyway. More civin, more and more and more and more. Because until you can actually make things that can do it for you, I mean, automated, automating the civin is reasonably simple. Uh, but automating the process of getting cobblestone and then gravel, etc., is not so simple. I mean, getting gravel stone is, sorry, getting cobblestone is simple with a cobblestone generator. Um, but actually turning that into something without having to vein mine a load of stuff with a hammer or a wand it's not so simple 
few moons later when we've actually got some resources and we can try and start making some of the set automations I've mentioned. And the first one, of course, is for the sieve. Now, I screwed up a little bit here. I thought that you needed one of these per sieve. You don't. You make one and then the sieves that you connect to it are automatically connected to the whole shaker. Um, the shaker is then shaked, shaked by the the water wheels that you have to build. And of course, the more water wheels you have, the quicker it shakes and the quicker it sieves the resources. Then all you need to do is pipe in the gravel, sand, dust, whatever it is you have. And you've automated that process as well. And at the end of that process of two hours or three hours of, of sieving, uh, you can see we have a decent amount of resources now look in the chest in a second and you'll see we've got a decent back up as well close now to making the pistons block of redstone block of iron and there is our chest of goodies redstone emeralds diamonds gold silver copper lead etc etc um making the blocks the difference actually between the other one you can't actually combine them in a crafting station you have to use a machine to make blocks from ingots and ingots into blocks and blocks into ingots etc um that's one difference that i've noticed so far in this pack is that you can do that which is nice uh, after all it is hardcore so at any point i can die and have to start all this crap again now water wheels i'm not sure how many you need and i am no expert with the mathematics of them so we're going to start with a couple i end up making i think it's eight or ten if i'm not mistaken there we go, you get four water wheels free as well. So we need to now make this work. Now, in order to set this up, you're gonna have to have water as well, of course. And it is one water source per wheel for it to work at its most efficiently, at, uh, from what I've seen anyway. So it's easy to put them down and just line them out amongst each other and then we just have to get water to it at a later date. Now at the start I'm just going to throw the water on there with some, I'm probably going to lose that now aren't I, yes, uh, with some slabs to try and bend the water around the bottom. So if you just put the water up and do a vertical drop it will work but if you wrap the water around in the correct direction underneath the wheel it does give it more rotational power. I believe is certainly how it seems anyway. All of the wheels then connect to each other. Each wheel increases its fellow wheel speed. And of course, then the last wheel being the one that you connect to the sieve shaker. And that is your automation. So to make the water, you need a wooden crucible. Putting in organic matter into the crucible, leaves, saplings, apples, etc into a wooden crucible will turn it down into water the same as if you put them into the wooden barrel to the side that you saw me build that would turn it into dirté we want water and we need uh well a bucket of water per water will we have right so we need at least five i think it is because i dropped one because i'm an idiot but never mind um, there are some leaves up there as well, so if I get some shears, I'll be able to steal those leaves that are floating in midair. I don't know if I've noticed, but I just did. As you can see, our resources are looking nice now. I've spent a lot of time sieving, uh, smashing with hammers and rinsing and repeating. It was quite painful. Uh, we are on day 14 now, so for the second episode, we've jumped, like I say, quite a far ahead. I haven't been sleeping through them either. The nights have been included because they're lit up and we've got no spawning happening. I've been using the nights as well to either be picking up pebbles, turning the pebbles into rock, smashing the rock into gravel, sand or dust, and then sieving that relevant material, depending on what we actually need, right? Um, and then we're currently trying to make a, a bouquet, but we can't... We need to smack the iron ingots down to iron sheets um, to then make three of those into a bucket now there is a table you can make that's reasonably simple but for some reason I forgot um, because between last time and this time it's been a while again if the uh, if, if the interest on Minecraft is there I will certainly share a lot more of these because it is one of my favorite games to play in modern not so much vanilla but definitely modded heavily modded and hardcore even more so that skin, by the way, I've had since I started playing it. it, it, it I've had it a, easily over a decade. 
There it is. So this thing, just you put your ingot on, use your hammer, and smack it into uh, the plate, and you just keep rinsing and repeating. So we'll make that and get that done. Like I say, it was reasonably, reasonably simple to make. So. And all we need is three plates to make a bouquet. Um, but it don't hurt to make a few extras to store for in the future. Or if you want to make it an extra few bouquets, you can. It's nice and easy. It automatically replaces. Once you've made it, it picks it up and automatically replaces for the other ingot. And you could do this with all your ingots as well. And of course, to make the dirt blocks, you need to do the same in the uh, wooden barrels. And if we need this to start expanding 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 our dirt track and then obviously we'll turn it into grass and then we hopefully should get some passive mobs growing on there now the hoppers are fantastic for doing automations on this putting a hopper on top of the the oak barrel that you saw and then the saplings and stuff in there will continue to put them into the barrel and make liquid uh, if you can get that out of there using a pipe would be wonderful but for this process it's even better because you put the barrel these barrels on top of a hopper and then obviously it automatically takes the dirt when it's finished out into the below and then you do the same above and you basically get automated dirt a as well now we've got the bonsai hopping bonsais which we can put a sapling in with a bit of dirt and it's going to then automatically grow once it grows it will cut it down and put the goods in the drawers below the drawers i feel are the best especially the four by four or the two by two as it is uh, four spots because you then get enough for the tree itself an apple the stick and a sapling you can get leaves as well but that's depending on how you what you prefer um for me the the saplings are good the leaves are good as well because they both give us dirty blocks and uh, water now, making some porcelain brick here. This is to do the first stage of the smeltery, which is a fantastic mod in itself, but the porcelain version is a bit pants. But you have to go through it in order to get to the seared block, which is the proper smeltery that you are used to. Uh, you have to make the grout, or groot, I am groot as it's called, and then melt that down or smelt that down into seared brick and then you make the proper smeltery from there that you we all know and love which duplicates ores and mixes ores into fantastic things like many many ilium i don't even know how to say that word but you all know what i mean ardai and cobalt together makes that many ilium the purple stuff that's really strong and yes you can laugh at me and correct me as you wish Seeing as we have a crap ton of iron, I'm just going around and making sure I'm upgrading what I need to. Chests being upgraded, but more importantly, the furnace is being upgraded. Upgrading the furnace to an iron one is cheap, just eight ingots around it. And you then have an iron furnace, of which you can upgrade, but it's already faster than the original. Wrapping gold around that will make it a gold furnace, which will make it even better. And then with the efficiency modules, you can also make coal last twice as long. It cooked twice as fast. And later on, you can even make it duplicate the ores like the smeltery does. But by then, I think smeltery will be the way we go. So I want to start getting some lava now. Um, the lava is going to be useful for fuel uh, as well as making obsidian. You can see there I've got one of the pipes down and automated the liquid pull out from that setup. So this is pretty auto automatic. All I have to do is right click with the dust and it makes me clay blocks. Now with the clay blocks, you put them down and smash them up. You'll get the clay nugget type things. You can do it in the crafting um, thing as well. It really don't matter. You get four per block regardless of how you do it, it seems. Making up the porcelain now, we can make a unfired crucible. Chucking that in the furnace will make a fired crucible, and that is what we can use to make a lava. Now, putting that on top of a torch will slowly melt the cobblestone that you're putting it down into lava. Um, there are many options you can use in terms of making that process faster. As you can see, I've grabbed a torch out for that reason, but then I realized that we've done so much sieving, we've got blaze powder from 
the dust. And nine blaze powder make a blaze mesh, which is put in from Britannia, I think it is. This is 30 times. So a torch is one times. So you will get uh, one millibucket of lava per tick. And this is 30. So it's definitely a lot faster. You can see there the rate is 30 times. For starting, as we are right now, that is OP as hell. Uh, and it's very quick at melting down cobblestone into lava. Be warned, using the pipes that I use like for the liquid, uh, for the water, sorry, for lava has a very high chance of exploding and setting things on fire. So be warned there, only do that when you need to. For me at the minute, all I need is to use the hopper to put the cobblestone in. That will immediately go into the crucible and start melting. And already you can see we've got 330 millibuckets of lava now. Already enough to make a obsidian block. So definitely good. And the mesh there, using nine uh, mesh, sorry, using nine of our blaze powder. Uh, is definitely worth it and very cheap four iron four redstone we can make a bucket it's not a bucket it's a fluid tank now it does only hold i think it's eight buckets um the better option is to use the singularity tank which is five glass and four iron ingots i think it is Try to remember, the recipes change all the time depending on what mod pack you're playing and what game you're playing, right? See there, that's working. But yeah, you can see the lava is going straight into there. That holds eight buckets. When it's full, it will then go into the crucible, which also holds, I think, eight buckets. So that's 16 in total, but we can upgrade that when we can. But with that done, the crucible is now done and the quest is done. And that's moving us to the cobble generator. This is pretty useful. A bucket of lava and a bucket of water. Uh, glass and some cobblestone then all you have to do is put one lava source and one water source either side of it and then it will infinitely create cobblestone at a reasonable rate uh, one per tick I think it is and you can upgrade it but we're not going to need to do that anytime soon it's going to be more than capable and it means that we never have to punch gravel no never have to punch dirt hay again uh, to make the cobblestone that we've been doing it will just infinitely create that for us and we'll just grab it as and when we need it simple set up directly above the crucible so that it directly goes in there to be melted into lava um, then some slabs around to stop it from falling out so on one side you put your water and on the other side you put your lava and then it should just work from that point i can't reach that i should have probably picked that up before i did this i have played this game before i promise um so we can grab that water will go in one side and the lava will go in the other yeah and i've made i've fumbled it a little bit but there you go water in beer and finally lava in beer when we get there That was a liquid pipe, as I said, being devastated by the lava. Actually, it might have been the hopper. I'm not sh sure which way around it was, but some got damaged by it anyway. So we can put... We need to get rid of that lava source so it doesn't set fire to my base, but I don't want to fall in it so it set fires to me. And, of course, replacing all of the slabs around the bottom of that, the ones that just burnt away that I've put out now, uh, with stone so that they won't burn. And this is then a lava generator that you can use and stack. Um, where the where it's going into that crucible beneath it, I will replace that likely for a chest, barrel, or something of them lines, so that we do get a, a massive stock stock up of cobble moving forward. For now, I'm just making it look aesthetically pleasing, or trying to anyway. Um, and that's just going to make us some lava for now. But we will obviously improve that very shortly. And actually, as we're almost at time anyway for this episode, I might as well get that done. Make the barrel. It is a quest uh, that we need anyway. So get that barrel completed. Now, these barrels are great for storing single items. Uh, they have a visual image as well to show you what's in it. Also, uh, you can quite easily up grade that now that there was the pipe yet again exploding luckily because there's no there's no um 
Wood around, it didn't set anything on fire like last time. But that don't matter because for this instance, I've got a couple of chests. No, barrels, no. Tanks, yes, thank you. A couple of tanks of lava already done. So I'm going to replace it and just instead of putting it in the crucible, just put it straight into this barrel. Here's the plan. And then we'll get a nice stock of cobblestone there. So that when I need to do some serious smashing of gravel, uh, sand and, and dust in the future, we will have that. Now it doesn't obviously pass directly from the block. You can see this barrel will hold 4,096 without any upgrades. Um, I am going to have to put that down once, block, move the crucible and replace... Uh, sorry, put a hopper in to automate it. Just like that. And there we go. Now that will continuously make cobble forever and ever and ever. Obviously, it will stop when it gets full, but we will upgrade it, I'm sure, before that. And we've got 16... Yep, 16 buckets of larvae for what we need and should we start needing more in the future when we have a smelter etc i will of course upgrade that for now though we are at the end of the episode so thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss more take care goodbye